Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're listening, whatever time you're watching this Facebook Live and listen to this podcast. Welcome to Your Onion Podcast. It's uh, Sunday. I am going to. 906. We're a bit late this morning. <laughs> yeah, due to uh, myself. Uh, John, as always, and our special guest, David Moreland. Welcome. Morning. Good morning. Good to be here. Thank you for coming. You know, you've always, uh, you've come on several times, haven't you? I think a third time, yeah. I think, yeah. Um, yeah, third time. It's been over the last four years, I think, approximately. Yeah, in various disguises. Yeah, various disguises. Various disguises. So, uh, David is here to talk about uh, everything sport. Uh, he is the uh, operations manager for Doha Golf Club. You see, I filled the form out online. You obviously didn't read it. Did you actually send it back? Yeah. Oh, actually. Okay. So, yeah, sports director, but sports whatever. Sports director, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> sports director. Sounds really T-boy, important to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, as you say, I've had various roles in various jobs, so yeah. The current one is sports director. Yeah, but it's generally around sports, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you've been involved with sports for quite some time now, I think, in Qatar. Yeah, I've been here for coming up this July will be 17 years. Wow. So, it's. Um, so you're like the Insti- institutionalized. Absolutely. Yeah, it's. Um, I came in 2001 as the director of, well, as the as the head teaching professional first at the golf club. So I was a coach in the UK and coached for about six years full time here. So then in 2001. 2001. Yeah. It so was, what was um, here in 2001? The golf uh, club. Uh, yeah, me. Surprised the yeah. Me. Um, yeah. Actually, I met my wife within like three days, and I think she was the, the third woman I saw, because it was like, well, we're not going to have much of an opportunity. <laughs> right, you'll do. Don't let her see that, though. Yeah. Of course, You're though. probably watching now. No, so um, 2001, well, where we're sitting now, looking out the window, West Bay, I guess there was the Sheraton, um, a couple of other buildings, and the city centre was open, and that's pretty much it between here. And the Rich Carlton was just finished, so between here... And the Ritz, there was nothing. No West Bay, just the golf club at the end of it. So, yeah, quite incredible, the changes in the last, well, every year. And where were you living? I lived near the airport. So oh, okay. I lived literally before Wacker, and it used to take me 19 minutes to get to work. Wow. There was one set of traffic lights on the way home. <laughs> and now if you went from there, it'd be minimum an hour, I guess. Yeah. So uh, it's just, yeah, phenomenal changes over the last. But it's a long time, 17 years. is. And as the golf club changed since... You know, no, not really. Not really. Not really. I mean, it's. I mean, we can, we'll go on to it. I'm sure, but the, the the dynamics of Qatar at the moment, the golf golf clubs are a good example of sort of explaining what's going on because our membership's probably dropped. Um, it's probably half of what it was six, seven years ago. Um, with the new golf course opening as well, it's um, probably bad timing for them as well to open now. But long run two golf courses we've always needed maybe three Oman had none at the start we opened we had one for years Oman had none now they've got four. Oh, really we've still only got one um, so to actually get golf going you need golf courses to get yeah. people to want to come here there's no point having one golf course you're not going to get any tourism coming in to play golf oh there's only one course so I'm not going to come in for one day and then go out again Yeah. so I think that some of our critics will sort of say oh you'll lose all your business to the new golf club but we're working with them to try and actually bring in this new four four day transit window oh, with okay. Qatar Airways. Yeah. We're working with Qatar Airways, we're working with the tourism authority between us and the new course to try and form a, a, a body called uh, Golf in Qatar. Um, anything outside of Qatar will market together as Golf in Qatar yeah, and bring, yeah. hopefully that four day window is perfect because we've got two days at our course, maybe two days at their course, and we're bringing some golf tourism in. So. I think that's the only way forward at the moment. I don't think it's difficult here. There aren't the people in the same jobs that had the disposable income to afford to play golf. Um, so we've suffered a bit through that. But as we'll talk about now, we're trying to diversify on that at the moment and um, generate some revenue in other ways, use the venue as a, as a venue rather than just a, rather than just golf. Yeah. Great. Well, we can, uh, let's just take a little uh, step. Take back a step. Back step. Talking about weeks. But you don't want you don't want to talk about the weeks. I don't know. <laughs> it would Come be nice to get the public. Let's not talk yeah. about the weeks. Let's talk about what people <laughs> want to hear. That's what it's well, all tell about. Us what do people want to hear? I don't know. I <laughs> want them to tell us what they want to hear. Like they can send us on uh, 
let's call them goose chases, and if they want some information, why don't they tell us what they want to hear? That's very true. That's what we want you guys to be a part of this show as much as we are. I just um, realized I'm supposed to be looking here as well. No, well, we're, so, we're having a conversation. I'm now talking to them. So <laughs> we're looking for you to give us ideas on information that you want to hear about. Maybe there's some areas that you can't get a clear information. Yeah, I'm cut off a little bit. Yeah, come on. You need to move the screen. So I'll bring it over for you. Is that all right? In the middle of my conversation. There you go. Well, Casper, I've got my son here so he could uh, move the camera. So, anyhow, that's it. We're trying to bring this show's all for you guys. So, let's <coughs> work together. Let's find out what it is you want to understand or get knowledge about. And it's better than you and I just telling about our weeks and our guests telling about their yeah, weeks. Yeah, but your week was uh, interesting because you were following that whole Cupic um, journey. Yeah. So, with regards to business, that's it was. Like but every business. week, there's not much change. So we're still doing interviews, no, enough, like as last week. Now. Yeah, exactly. I'm yeah. telling you the same thing. We're, yeah. I interviewed another ten people, well <laughs> another twenty people. So they came forward. Yeah, people are coming forward. I'm getting validation on the idea. It's a property portal, as I've mentioned before. I'll mention it again. So I'm getting validation. People say it's needed. People are giving me feedback on what they want to see and what would it, what would make it better for them to mm -hmm. use. So I'm getting the feedback from the the public of yeah. what they want, and hopefully we're going to gear the idea towards them. Okay. So as the show, so I want to do the same thing Have you here. Save it off a little bit now. We need to move around now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so what was the big surprise in the promo on Thursday? You I said did mention a big surprise. So people living on the Pearl and around and anywhere else obviously in Qatar. The first specialty food store opening up on the Pearl. Uh, we're hoping to open the doors first of May. Could be sooner, so stay tuned. So it's going to be Green li uh, Good Life Organics, or excuse me, Good Life Market is the name of the grocery store. And there's going to be specialty foods. My wife foods. will be happy. So yes, we're trying to make Maybe. a lot of people happy. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean we used to, she used to send me to Dubai. Whenever I went to Dubai, it'd be like buy a I don't know, 10 gallon coconut oil, and bring it back in your suitcase, or bring back sort of all these different products that we couldn't get here. So she'll be very happy. And a lot as long of as people you, as long are as you get this big tubs of coconut oil, she'll, yeah. be, she'll be down there. Yeah. So a lot of people are also ordering online. So hopefully, you can we order can online help. as well. Well, yeah, we can order online for, for the store. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do deliveries. <coughs> uh, and also, hopefully, because a lot of people are ordering from specialty stores online and bringing it into Qatar. So not only are they bringing it physically, they're also ordering it. I think on a food product side of it, people tend to be a bit wary because it's difficult to get food in, isn't it? So I mean, from an ordering online, yeah, that's true. I would assume that you couldn't. So I mean, I probably wouldn't bother trying. So you guys going to team up with Purple Box that we had uh, a few episodes? We'll definitely speak to them. We're working on our own system. This was Monira Al Kubesi. She was on the show a few weeks back, yeah, and yeah. she was talking about this. So I just wanted to give <coughs> you guys an update, telling you that we're going to be opening soon. So that's, that's so. What's your experience about bringing food in? Uh, so far, so good because it's com not coming from anywhere that the blockade is affecting. It's been. But I thought there was a monopoly, or there was a couple of companies that would be generally in control of the food that came through uh, Qatar's, you know, borders. But you can actually do it yourself. Uh, the biggest challenge is labeling. Because stuff already has to be labeled in Arabic before it even comes into the port. They won't allow it in if it's not labeled. In Arabic? Yes. So that's one of the things. Norm uh, other that's where they normally put the stickers over what you're trying to read on the yeah, back. Yeah, that's right, right? So <laughs> yeah, you never can remove <laughs> you them. You can never see what... No, exactly. You don't need to know what calories are in it or what... Okay. Or how to it's cook obviously, it. Yeah, it's obviously low yeah. fat. You can't see it. <laughs> they place the stickers perfectly over all the important information no, I that you mind need. mind if you can actually peel away the stickers, yeah. but you can't. Yeah, no. They're just... But one thing that the government needs is that it must be stickered before it enters. So On every product? Yes, the products must be stickered, properly stickered, or Arabic. So how do you do that? You just get in contact with your the supplier? Yeah, your supplier should okay. be doing that. Or you, you buy it as the wholesaler, for example, or you have a medium um, uh, intermediary, a person in the middle, obviously, that will sticker it for you and then ship it. Okay. So there are different ways to get around it. Yeah. So that's one of the uh, hurdles that you have to cross in bringing in products. So uh, so this supermarket is a supermarket? Yeah, we're calling it, well, it's called Good Life Market. market. Okay. Specialty but, foods. But you were telling me the other day that uh, you can actually have food there? You can eat food there? There will be ready-made foods there. So we're looking for suppliers and partners to, uh, that we can uh, shelf their food as well. No, I mean you can sit yes, there and we eat. Yes, we have, yeah. 
but we're not cooking anything, we're not preparing anything. It's going to be ready-made meals. So we're looking for companies that are in the health food yeah. business that want to display their foods on our shelves. What, and people who ready just made, yeah. buy and eat it then? <coughs> exactly, <coughs> okay. exactly that. So, yeah, something new, a little bit of a new concept. No, absolutely, and how big is the uh, square meter? Uh, about 90 to 100 square meters, because oh. we have a mezzanine level, but it'll be only open on the ground floor. The mezzanine will be our stock area and offices. Okay. And location? Location is Pearl, uh, right beside F45. So that's about building, oh, good question, 25, I want to say. Round to the... Yeah, and towards can, Medina can Central. You park. You can park. Uh, you can park at Building Twenty, okay. or Twenty Two. You can park okay. and walk over. There is valet parking in all the cul-de-sacs as well. No, I mem remember you saying so. That. There is valet parking, and you can park at uh, Tower Twenty Two and walk. How over. much is the valet parking? I think it's thirty reals. Thirty reals. Don't quote me on that because I saw the sign the other day. And they might have increased it. <laughs> 35 maybe <laughs> I like to spit numbers and then say don't quote me on it is that what you're laughing at? Yeah, absolutely <laughs> don't you quote your me numbers. On it. I don't, don't know it's in the numbers. area of 30 <laughs> <laughs> so yeah Cubic's <clears throat> been keeping me busy two times a week we also had a class a preparatory class on digital marketing and customer valuations and propositions and well value propositions so we had a crash course on that as well so four hour lecture um, and practical theory going and is it all it. going in is it you know well you take the important you? stuff in and you try to write notes <laughs> for all the rest of it and then you get the slides and then you go back and study and there's definitely stuff that I didn't think about okay um, lots of stuff has been brought to light that I didn't even think about I love the customer validation I love asking people because my idea has changed like it's changing to gear towards what the market actually wants Wow people like we, I'll say this again ideas are cheap mm -hmm. you have an idea if you don't talk to your customers you're gonna launch an idea that you think they want that doesn't help you have to launch an idea that they want all right I'm gonna put it to you sure what about companies that are coming from abroad that think the clientele here want their product well if they're not validating it and going out into the local market then what's the point if yeah. they haven't had validation so it could potentially, even if it works in another country, it might not work here. No, exactly. So you're really, if you're not validating your, if you're not going to your customers and asking them, do you want this, mm. then how do you know? You're really I've, taking I've a seen, chance. I've seen a few companies over the years fail here by assuming that it will work. Yes. Whatever they try and well, do in Qatar will work. Because they, without that, but the, I think the problem here over the years has been that it's difficult, similar to marketing in Qatar, it's difficult to find out that information as well. You can't just go to a, a website or whatever and find out exactly the demographics of who wants to do what in Qatar, which is, I think in the UK maybe you can. You can find out a general idea of who wants to play sport, who wants to eat health food, and who wants to, all these elements. Here, I think there are companies over the years that have kind of uh, failed in that way, and I think that's why setting up your own company in Qatar, okay, it's tough to do, but it's, it's an advantage because you do actually know what, if you've been here a while, you if know what people want. you've been here a while, yeah. If you, yeah, definitely, because you get an understanding of the market. But I, I will swear by this. You go to your market and you ask your clientele the questions and make sure that your idea is geared towards what they're wanting. And this is what you and I were talking about right before the podcast is the chambers that are here to help businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, if that's you, why I mentioned about companies coming yeah. in. Yeah. So those companies that before they're coming in, they're asking you to do market research. However, how many of those companies have asked you to go to their clients or potential customers and ask them, do they want this? Mm. See? So that's what you have to really consider. So that's what Cubic has really taught us, is to go to your clients, go to your potential customers and ask them if they'll use this, if they want it, and not only that, what they want to see in a product or a service. And you can gear it and change it and manipulate it to what to gear towards this market, rather. And I think that's... I think that's a successful model. And then people will always say, well, I'm scared of giving my idea to people because they'll steal it. Mm. Well, yeah, but at the end of it, it's all about execution. So if you execute it properly, then you're going to win. And not a lot of people will go to their customers and get all those little details that will make their product better and <coughs> be able to execute better. So I'm really, well, that's what I've learned. There yeah, you go, very good. putting it out there. So customer yeah. validation is a big part of it. And then marketing after that after you deliver your idea. 
So yeah, my week. Very and, good. And my yourself. <laughs> my week was uh, family arrived last week, so I've kind of been doing the tour guide um, thing around uh, Qatar, which is nice because when you're living in a place, you kind of forget. Yeah. You don't see it through. You know, you see when you have guests arriving, you see it through their eyes rather than your eyes, where you've got used to everything and yep. you know you kind of stick to your supermarkets and places to go out and eat. But when you have tourists come, you're a tour guide, and then you have to adventure, and you actually see how much Qatar has changed. Doha has changed. There's a bit more to do than in 2001. Oh, absolutely. So, oh, what are the yeah. what are the hot tour? Tour spots. Where do you take a first timer to Qatar? Where do you take? Well, Sukhwakif is is the number one place I would say. Okay. Just to get that whole cultural feel, the restaurants, the smells, you know, the whole atmosphere is is fantastic. Sukhwakif. Um, then I, <laughs> we took them to the Mall of Qatar just to show them what a modern mall looks like. But they were having some great shows. Actually, they had uh, it's Georgia near Armenia. Right so. above Armenia. Yeah. Okay, they had. Uh, at the Mall of Qatar, um, like a dance group from Georgia. Oh, wow. Yeah, traditional uh, dance. It's very similar to ours as well. And then they had four guys singing very deep and going, and harmonizing. Okay. It was beautiful. <laughs> nice. Was, yeah, very nice. We were singing, although we were singing about PJ P. Ch Changs. Yeah. Having a nice Chinese one. PF Changs. PF Changs, thanks. See, it must be a local. Because <laughs> um, the restaurant's local, right? And then, uh, yeah, just, um, yeah, it was great. So what else? What else? Uh, well, I'm taking my son, Sam Juning, okay. um, on Tuesday so morning. So the dunes are always important. Yeah, beautiful uh, location there. Uh, we went to the Intercon, the beach. Intercon, the beach, okay. Yeah. So hotels. hotels. So hotels, malls, and the dunes. Dunes. Uh, is there and anything souk. else? Do you know and that there's a souk, another souk in Wakara? Yes, I do. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, I haven't it's beautiful. been there. Right on I've the water. I've taken the dogs on the beach, but mm -hmm. I've never actually gone in. Is it nice? It's beautiful, yeah, because of the location of that compared to the likes of... The Sea Wakif is different because it's in the middle of town. Yeah. But this is on the beach. So you're walking along the beach and it is lovely. But again, all it is is just food places all yeah. the way along. There's not... But you can... S are the are you, food I mean, places you are looking out on the beach? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you sit on the water. Oh. And they have so a fish market, though. Yeah. You have a big fish market inside. Oh, well, maybe that's on my hit list then. Take and then Farid, yeah. have you got that way? Zakrit? The beaches? Yeah. Yeah, Lots. we're not really beach beach people. Yeah. Really. <laughs> you know. So anyway, that was my week. Uh, and then I met uh, Peter Cook from the British Chamber of Commerce. He was uh, selling his services of what they do. Um, and that's what I was saying about finding information <coughs> for companies who want to do business here in Qatar. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to see how he could help me as well because I've never really used that kind of service because we changed to be... So we started here under a Qatari sponsor and then about four, four years later we registered in the UK and became a UK company and then we registered on the QFC. Um, so now... So, and I've never really thought of myself as a British company. So I wanted to see how the British angle could help so in doing some business. What did oh, you yeah, discover? No, basically, yeah, he can, you know, he's there to do market research, he's there to, you know, he's very well connected and can give you some introductions. That's so good. If anyone's out there listening from abroad, they're the contact people to uh, find market research and find out whether your product is. Do we know how many countries have actually a chamber here? I know there's the German one. I know there's the British one. Yeah, uh, good I, question. I don't know. That'll be something to find. Actually, out. I'm sure they have like a, once a year. They have all the chambers meet. Is that the back to business? Is no. that the chambers that are doing that? No, the business councils are doing that. Yeah. That'd be something. Yeah, that's another out. thing. Then you got the business councils, and then you got the. Uh, we've actually got we've got the Spanish business council Thursday. They've got a fo football tournament they've organised. Oh really? At our new venue, yeah. So they've got I think. Um, They've got 11 or 12 teams, different guys that are obviously connected to probably to Spanish. I think just Spanish people in Qatar that are linked with the business council. They book, I think they do it every year, but they've booked the next two Thursdays to come down and I think 11 teams play in a sort of round robin tournament. And they have a knockout on the second Thursday. Well, you have to so explain that they're not playing on the golf course, but 
No, no, they're playing they're football. On your new facility. So it's a five. They're playing. I think it's seven aside. They're playing. Yeah. So they're using. We've got a new sports venue um, with football. At the moment, it's generally football. Um, with a, we've got a cage football pitch with the floodlights, so you can play till eleven o'clock at night. The main pitch is being floodlit um, now, so they're coming on. That will have to be floodlit by Thursday actually, because they're playing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they're playing. Uh, Thursday night they're going to use the pitch and just split it up and do <coughs> seven aside on both halves of the main pitch. Um, so yeah, we're, that's the sort of thing we're trying to encourage. Is it will be open? It's, it's open for rent anyway, just on an hourly basis to rent either the seven aside pitch. We've got that that link that changes into three five aside. It's got dividers that we put in and take out. Um, All right, now that you're now that you're setting the whole uh, yeah let's start from the yeah, let's, let's go from back the a little beginning. bit when, when did it all start you know the golf club then suddenly deciding oh look we've got some space uh, at the corner of our golf club what do you want my history or do you want do you want let's start with your history let's go well, last, well, you want my, do you want my week well, or do you want my, my well. 17 years <laughs> <laughs> Where should we start? Can you can uh, can you condense seventeen well, I'll, years? Well, I'll, 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 I'll condense. I'll yeah. condense the first part. I mean, yeah, I was. Everyone, an idea. I briefly. Because you are familiar earlier. with the golf club. You said you started with the golf yeah. club, and then you moved around, and so now you're back to the. Two thousand one to two thousand eleven, wow. um, I was head teaching professional and then director of golf, so more of an operational role. Okay. And that was purely golf. It was the golf club itself. We didn't have any other facilities attached to it. It was involved in running tournaments running the membership and having um, Callum Masters and, and being involved with purely golf related um, and coaching. When did Callum Masters uh, start? 19, yeah, I can't remember, 1996 oh, so was the first year. Before you, So right. five years before I got okay. there. While but, we're on the topic, um, can we touch on that a little mm -hmm. bit more, the Qatar Masters, yeah, what's yeah, sure. going on there, what's the updates with them? So that, the, the year we've just had, that was, the, that was the final year officially of Commercial Bank. So it's always been known as the Commercial Bank Qatar Masters. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I noticed your. Uh, so I'm wearing the the emblem today. Promotion for the Commercial Bank. Yeah, I didn't have a golf club one at home. <laughs> They're at work. Okay, so this is the last so year of the Commercial Bank. Officially, the last year of the Commercial Bank Qatar Masters. We, um, I think we, well, we moved it back. <clears throat> the dates were always early days were always in March. They moved it back into the Middle East swing. They call it so. Um, Abu Dhabi, Qatar, Dubai was always end of January, beginning of February. With the with the market here and, and the we've to be honest, we struggled with funding with the Qatar Masters and so have the bank and the government have reduced their funding, they've always paid the prize money. Oh really? So the Qatar government through the Olympic Committee have always provided the prize money oh. and then the bank have sort of underwritten the tournament. So yeah when they're underwriting it, it doesn't mean they've got to put a certain amount of money into it. And this is where it's been for the last few years is they, when they've had money, they've made it like this with all the top players. Yeah. This year, there's just no, there was no, no capital there oh, compared okay. to the likes of Abu Dhabi. So, so Abu did da you have anyone come this year? We had, I mean, just purely the order of merit for the European tour. So you're not paying, all these top players need paying if they're not, they're not going to come unless they're paid. So, so you get prize money as well as you get paid to actually come. So if you take Abu Dhabi, for example, don't quote me on the numbers. <laughs> my job. You're learning well. Because I'll don't get do phone it, Abu Dhabi, uh, the tournament Abu Dhabi is even bigger than the, the Dubai tournament now. So the prize fund is around 3 million <coughs> euros. euros. Our prize wow. fund it was, our prize fund this year, I think, was 1. Point, what was it, 1.8? But they're we paying 1.8 million euro or real dollars price fund dollars here. Yeah, well, three million, million dollars um, in Abu Dhabi for the price fund. So first place, first place here this year was two hundred and ninety three thousand okay. dollars for the winner um, in Abu Dhabi is about four hundred thousand for the winner. But they're not really uh, they're not saying they're not playing for the prize money. They are because if they win a tour event, then they get a two year exemption. And then they, if they win enough money, if they don't win an event, but they win enough money, around about 350,000 euros, you keep your card for the next year. Oh, i this around. So you keep your European Tour card for the next year. So obviously it does affect you if the, if the tournament prize money is higher. But that's not really the issue. What you've got with Abu Dhabi is they're paying approximately this year, they paid around about between five and seven million dollars in appearance money. That's 
So bearing in mind to, to within get the, the big pot. names. No, no. So um, that's on that's on top of everything. So, so that's like a so their overall budget for running the tournament is going to be around about fifteen million dollars, and the prize fund is only three because they're paying seven million to get the likes of yeah, that's to yeah. get to bring yeah. the names. Rory yeah. McIlroy, yeah. Dustin Johnson, these guys. So they do. They pay everyone. But Dustin to Johnson it was paid a million and a half dollars to come just to come play. And our entire tournament this year was run off three million dollars for the Catamasters, the entire wow. event. So this is what you're, we're up against a little bit at the moment, and it's the banks last year. Um, the bank want to be involved again. We obviously it'd be great if the bank is still involved in the tournament, but we're going to start. We're really looking for uh, other sponsors sponsor. now. So I don't know whether the bank will be the title sponsor okay. for 2019, and I think we're expecting next year to also be a little bit of a struggle with with the actual uh, funding of the event. We'll run, I mean, it will definitely run. We made it a bit more low-key this year, but I think it I think it worked better. We kind of went back to the old days of using the clubhouse for the hospitality and using the, the smaller grass area just inside the clubhouse, outside the clubhouse for the um, for the village. And so it was great. It felt a lot reason. more sort of yeah. cosy and, and people... It, it seemed busier than previous years by making it just really small because how many people do we get? We get probably 2,500 people a day on a busy day. And it was free through. this year. It was free as well. So that's the route we'll go down. And to be honest, for me, that's the size of the event, really. There's not that many people in Qatar that really will come to watch, they say, many sporting events, because it's just not a massive community to be able to do that. But mm. it was a good atmosphere, and I think next year will be similar. And then, obviously, then something we'll talk about, I guess, so when from there been- onwards, the World Cup is going to inflate, I think, every sporting event that is running tennis I'm sure will get bigger and the golf will get bigger again leading in those years leading Cup. up from yeah. 2020 to the World Cup yeah so when has been when is it when has it been your best year for the Keller Masters when was the when did you say uh, it was the um, biggest I can't remember exactly what year it was but and it was for me it was kind of uh, it was a bit over the top but it was the what was the year they won the, the World Cup bid 2010. 2011 2010 2010 so the 2011 Keller I'm sure it was that year or it could have been the 2010 Cadre Masters, I think, maybe in promotion of the World Cup. They brought over, the bank paid millions of dollars to bring over these superstars. So you had you had Michael Johnson there, you had Carl Lewis there, you had um, not golfers, you had... No, I was going to say, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you had no, you had, you had Omar Sharif there, you had, um, you had different actresses there, you had two of the Bollywood actresses, you had... Um, Natalie and Brulia, they were. You had. Oh, really? Corny uh, Cover was there. So, all these, they had at least a dozen of these superstars walking around. Um, remember uh, Michael Johnson? <laughs> he played the, played the Pro Am. Uh, he's never played golf before. So really? He'd be playing the Pro Am, which is hard enough anyway. And I think he'd, people were trying to interview him halfway around, so he, he got a set of high clubs. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> One of the pros, Pete Bailey at the time, was asked to caddy for him. He's like, yeah, no problem, I'll caddy for be great. He said he didn't talk to him all the way around. And after nine holes, he just, Pete's standing there on the tee, waiting for him to come to the tee. And Michael Johnson's like, thought he'd finish. So he's walked no. off. <laughs> and he didn't come back. So he no. didn't carry on and play the rest of the tournament. So, yeah, it was um, that was a bit, a little bit bizarre. And then yeah. Jane Seymour was on the range having a lesson. And you're like, just very surreal. Wow. But Natalie and Brulia was... Very nice. Yeah, they tended to bring in good concert acts as well. Um, it was good. I mean, and that's where we we had a lo- not a local band. We had a band in from uh, from Scotland this year. Who were, but again, that was in the clubhouse. And Friday at the golf this year was as good as any year. But we had a band um, that were playing sort of each night at the end of the decking outside the clubhouse. Just great, great yeah. fun. Yeah. And it wasn't Texas or one of these bigger bands that we've had over the years. But it was. It was great for the people that were there. It didn't, we didn't sell tickets from out to outside as much as we've done previous years. But again, I think it's it's nice to have now and again, but it's a little bit unnecessary, I think, um, for the size of the tournament mm. yeah, at the moment. Okay. So yeah, it, it's my opinion. Is it hasn't got okay. We don't have the money to pay the players at the moment, so you don't get like, the likes of uh, Rory McIlroy coming, Sergio Garcia coming, who have played in the previous years. And we've had some great champions, so it's, it's it's a shame not to see them. But I think that's a little bit of fault of the dynamics of golf yeah, and, and the, yeah. the way that sort of we're not going to. Well, if we've got the spare money, 
we would rather put it in the prize fund. Mm. Let's get our prize fund up to yeah. 7 million, and if you want to come, you can come. Yeah. But I think it's gone down the other way of, I guess most sports have, where you, you just get paid to rock up and you don't really necessarily... Uh, See, because then it's not based on your performance then, is it? No, but it's it's part of it's just part and parcel of not just golf, yeah. other sports as well. Yeah, true. So, a little bit of a shame. It seems like they're trying to build it into something that's really not, or something it shouldn't be. Keep it quaint, keep it what it is, keep it for us locally, and it's difficult. I think that so we've struggled a little bit when you're running a tournament in Qatar. Most sponsorship money, people don't want to sponsor in Qatar. What's the point? They might as well sponsor tournaments outside of Qatar to try and uh, for example Qatar Airways will generally sponsor in Germany or one of, one of their routes oh because then it promotes promotes yeah. coming to Qatar yeah people know who Rasgas are in Qatar people know or, or Qatargas now as it is you've got people know who Qatar Airways are within Qatar so they don't really need to promote no, that's true. inside of Qatar which is yeah. a shame because I think they've got to get behind some of these tournaments and not just not just football but other sports and make them make them bigger internally so people are actually playing that live here and getting involved and going to watch them and and sort of getting involved with these events and knowing about them mm-hmm. like we talked about yeah. earlier knowing when they're on um, oh were you having that discussion we, yeah a little bit <laughs> <laughs> and building building internally again the people that are here to actually get them more involved um, in the sports that are running in Qatar so yeah I guess it's difficult from a sponsorship perspective for the Qatar Masters but I think for for everybody, that's the bu- that, they're the budgets that have been cut yeah. in the last few years yeah. for for funding for events and and for for sponsorship of, of anything really. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what 2019 brings. <coughs> Probably you guys got a understanding of how to run it. Now you can perfect the that that methodology in 2019. It will be. I mean, it's a case of making sure that you're not spend the the tournament doesn't necessarily make very much money, but it's cost money in the past. Yeah. So we're we're just ensuring that it doesn't cost the golf club or it doesn't cost yeah. actually money to run it, which would be just crazy to do it. I mean, I think that I think it will go to the new golf course. I think we'd be quite happy because it, it's, oh, really? it's been running at our course for what since 1996. I mean, you're looking at sort of over 20 years it's been running at the golf club, and that's three weeks where the members or two weeks where the members can't play golf mm. every year, and it's kind of the pain the membership. And it's nice to go and watch. Are they allowed to play before as well? We closed the course sense, two weeks before the event. Okay, just to make sure it's all pristine. So you, you're losing three weeks of a year. Yeah. So much. 2019, you think you'll be in the new place? In the new. No, no, they're not ready. Ah, the they'll year. be ready. They'll be open, but they don't want to host anything like that really at the moment. So I think, but we'd be quite happy. For, we've already talked to them about potentially hosting that or, or even running. We had a ladies event at the golf club as well. We had a ladies European tour event last year. Um, you've got the seniors tour and so on so hosting either an additional event at the new club or even the Cadamasters may be moving there to give we need to uh, without going into detail too much about the sort of golf course itself and the the greens keeping side of the course you spoke the greens that we have the, the grass that we have on our greens is supposed to be replaced probably every six seven years or be redone they've been down 23 years because we've never had another golf course to allow people to go and play Mm -hmm. so if you're in Dubai if you're in most countries you can set up a reciprocal with another course Mm -hmm. your membership go over to play there while you're doing some work on the golf course so we've always suffered in that way we can't do anything with it and obviously the heat huge heat changes over the year you're having to rip the greens up put different grass down and it, it takes a battering over a long period of time so we're always against the elements with the course because we haven't been able to give it a rest at any time in the last 20 years so I think that would be welcome I think that you'll see that happening I think at the golf club Dar golf club in within the next two years you'll see us actually redoing yeah. greens it's great and, and it's nice. great to have the other golf course to take some pressure off us when we try and do that so good so that's Qatar Masters now <clears> so <throat> what else is happening on that land <laughs> So well, yeah, no, that's we were going through his history. Oh right? yeah, sorry. Yeah, Let's go back. Yeah, so I don't know. I, yeah, so I wanted to hear about the Qatar Masters. So yeah, yeah. two thousand. Uh, that's we'll, we'll fast track through that. So two thousand one to two thousand eleven, I was coaching for about seven years, and I set the golf academy up that's there now. And then I was director of golf so operations till two thousand eleven. Um, 
I left then and set up a, I stayed in Qatar, set up a sports company called Legacy Sports, which is still running. Um, it was myself, my business partner who ran that, he's running that now. Um, my decision on that was, was a simple one. We talked to our business partners in Dubai and um, the events part of, we, we with National Sports Day, the first year we did National Sports Day was 2014. We set the company up in 2013 actually, I had a year, a year break. Set the company up in 2013. 2014 we did National Sports Day, 15 and 16. And probably a revenue change of about, well, let's say, based on the first year, the next year we took 50% less. Oh really? The year after that we took another 50, 60% less, so. Well, due to bad marketing? <laughs> Uh, Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> probably <laughs> just down to events budgets. So, and we kind of made a not a mistake, but we, as you do when you set your own business up, you can get a little bit greedy at times. If something we jumped at the chance because when we set the company up, we set it up as a sports, a youth development for sports, so sports academies. So, based on building relationships with existing venues, most of them being schools. Um, to try and cover after schools activities but then put in our own academies, holiday camps, things that we saw as missing as a sort mm. of grassroots sports that weren't really available. Um, you've got the likes of Aspire and so on but for us that wasn't grassroots, it wasn't available to the general public to bring your kids and, and have qualified coaches take them beyond your ECAs after school to, to a more sort of wide, um, wide range of sports. Quite a few companies doing football, but we we tried to diversify a little bit. Now, we got the opportunity of, of just by being involved in the sport, suddenly somebody said, oh, can you do an event for us for Sports Day? Oh, okay, yeah, definitely. And then we suddenly saw these money signs. Okay, well, there's a good bit of money to make out of this. So we threw a lot into the event side of it. And probably 50% of our business then, within a couple of years, was events-based. And relying on that to make up for the fact that we were struggling a little bit to build the uh, the difficulty in Qatar was for me and it still is and this will move on to the, the golf club thing in a minute mm. is venues so for you to use a school it's very difficult because they're not really allowed to or they weren't previously I think it changed last November you weren't previously the school allowed to make money after school hours from renting facilities out they could cover costs but in the UK, I mean, every school, that's how they make their money. They rent the facilities out after hours and people come and play football, play volleyball, whatever. The SEC stopped that in Qatar. They couldn't, schools were struggling to do it. So we were struggling as a company to rent facilities. We we're purely working with schools on a, on a, on a kind of barter deal where we'll help you with your after school activities if you let us use the facility. So it became very difficult in that they go, okay, we've got, well, we have exams this week, so you can't use the sports hall. Mm. And we're trying to run a professional outfit and we're telling parents, well, sorry, you can't come this week. So, but there's, there was very few other venues available where we could just go, right, there's some money to book the sports hall. We want to run football, cricket, tennis, whatever, uh, over the next year. So we're always a little bit up against it and that took some time to develop We've, and it's legacy still going we have venues we have swimming have venues increased or you know you're saying about the schools are allowed now but I think the hotels the has helped because the hotels are struggling a little okay. bit yeah. so now they're more open to we uh, legacy have a swimming academy at two of the hotels now oh really wow okay. and also a dance academy at two of the hotels yeah so they've become more so open they've opened up okay. so that's, that's helped yeah. and that's much better because it's for legacy it's a it's a contract you can actually do it and work out financially yeah, how you're yeah. faring yeah. and know that you've got a one two year contract mm -hmm. as you would hope in to run a proper business so we we've, that's been built up now and probably had the company stuck with that idea throughout um, then we would have we wouldn't have suffered so much when the events dropped off so the main issue going back to why I, I moved on is that purely from a financial stand, we probably lost 50% of our business was events. Those budgets have disappeared for family days, for companies. National Sports Day has dropped off a lot on 
people are still doing things but they're not paying not doing it, through the nose yeah. to do the sports events so we struggled on that side of it and that our cash flow just went through the floor so um, the easiest idea for me was that we had a um, a partner who could run the business anyway for me to step aside and take out my financial element of that business mm -hmm. was the first idea and it, it came in conjunction with um, Gary McGlinchey who's the, the, the general manager back at the golf club now of him coming back and I worked with him in the early years and he came back as general manager a couple of years ago he's a good friend of mine we work well together and the opportunity of going back in a slightly different role to run this to build this sports venue at the golf club rather than just go back into a golf operational role um, was a great opportunity as well so it, it fit together me chat me leaving legacy and coming back and I suppose it helped club. that you had done legacy before I so knew we were talking about this the market uh, knowing your market knowing what people want yeah okay I haven't physically gone out to my customers now from the situation I mean I asked them what they want but through running legacy and through that experience over the last sort of 17 years not just with legacy but the reason we set legacy up was because we saw a gap in the market of people not being able to um, well for example if you want if you've got three kids and you want them to do sports and one wants to do swimming one wants to do tennis and one wants to do football you're in the car you're here there and everywhere absolutely from the minute you leave school you get home at six o'clock and you've been over the whole of Doha, mm. probably three days a week. Um, so our aim was to try and start with Legacy to try and make that easier for parents, try and get two or three sports going in one venue. With the golf club now, my going into the, the having the facility at the golf club to actually implement that, <clears throat> having the land to do it, which we never had with Legacy, and it will be our own land and our own venue and being able to put in um, multiple sports where parents can literally, if you, if you live in the West Bay, uh, Pearl area, you'll be able to come to the golf club, it's local to you, and literally do everything. So the kids will be able to do golf, swimming, cricket, football, rugby, mountain biking. Swimming? We're going to put a pool in next year. Oh, really? Wow. Out, outdoor or indoor? It'll be in, It'll be covered, but okay. we're, we're toying between, I mean, that will be probably a year, 18 months before we have a proper clubhouse. We've got a temporary unit going in. Um, we've got a small temporary unit now. The aim is to increase the size of that um, as we go forward. We'll have a membership of the sports sports zone, as it's called. Sports so we're doing zone, the, the zone. we're doing the brand we're doing the branding at the moment. We've got a few companies are putting in uh, proposals to do uh, branding. So we're creating a new so we're creating a brand identity. It will be sports zone at Doha Golf Club, and then we'll have football academy at football academy at sports zone, cricket academy at sports zone. So we're we're looking at the branding ideas of of how we do it. So it's not Doha Golf Club is still the the home of it and it's still got to be represented as Doha Golf Club yeah. where people know where it is and but it'll have its own identity and its own well, it's got its own entrance so you come from the sale well I was going to say does it have its own entrance because golf people won't like you know everyone turning no up. I know yeah. Yeah. so it, it's, it will be a different target market okay. it is on the side of the golf it is linked to the golf course and it's by the 16th hole of the golf course but the access is through LaSalle. You come through past the Shafala Centre and in behind, and there's the access there. They're, they're actually building six of the World Cup football pitches, um, training pitches at the moment, behind the golf club. Oh, wow. Okay. And our venue is right next to that. So by 2022, you'll actually have six World Cup pitches and then our venue next door with four pitches and this whole sports venue. So that whole area is going to be, be interesting to see what the. So who came up with the initial idea, the initial concept? It's kind of it's grown. You know, when I, su walking, I suggested when walking one evening on the golf course and just went. See that, see Gary, that over there, yeah. there's a there's a plot of land over there. It's a, maybe we could use that. We've had um, so the area where it's been built or where it's being developed was a turf nursery for the golf course. So we had three grass areas of ten thousand square meters each, and that was being used. And actually, they had different types of turf. So they've been using that for the last 10, 15 years to service the football pitches around Doha. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah. So we've always sold turf from those areas. The the likes of Aspire and the new pitches, they now have their own turf nursery, so they don't really need yeah, we got one. our turf. We've got one behind our house. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. So we don't, they, they've, they're now, they have venues up, um, up north 
where they've they've put in full turf nurseries and so on. So they're based not coming on the World to you Cup. anymore. So we can still sell a certain amount of okay. turf, but we've decided that okay, let's let's go away from selling it and let's build our own venue in that space. So it was I was playing golf with with Gary the GM and we drove past there what? and I said <laughs> I said uh, we need to put a football pitch there, and that was the start of it. And then it's kind of gone right, okay. And it, Gary's pretty good like that. He'll go right. We're going to do this, 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 and this. Let's do it now. And then then it's a case of okay, well maybe we need to think about what we're doing, but it's very much that's his approach to things yeah. and so that's why it's escalated quite quickly but the reason it has as well is that we've we've got the expertise on site mm. to build these things without it being a massive overhead so we've got the expertise of our green green staff we've got the the manpower to go out there prepare the prepare the grounds put down the turf or, or sow the sprigs and and uh, and build the areas so that's why we were able this summer to cover, we've got one eleven a side pitch. Over the summer that's been extended, turned sideways, so we've got two eleven a side. We've got a seven a side cage pitch we've got in which has three barriers in that make it a five a side. We've got another grass pitch, we're gonna put make that into two full size pitches as well. We were just gonna do one. Now we've seen the demand, but we can make that decision overnight and it doesn't cost a yeah. huge amount yeah, of yeah. money, a huge investment. Yeah. Because we have the expertise and the manpower. Yeah. So that's why it's developed quite quickly and the cricket pitch will also be done over the summer we'll have a softball baseball diamond put in there as well we have a mountain bike track we've got a company that we team up with they do the school groups down there three or four days camping it's a mountain bike track they're putting in a high ropes course they're putting they want to put in a climbing wall so it's escalating wow all nice. over the place so we'll see i think november will be good it'll be developed nicely in november and then we're looking at opening a membership from January. Not a, not a huge expense, but just a controlling aspect to it where you can come and do yeah, different gonna, sports. And I was going to say, how can people book? Where do they go? Who do they? So, yes, yeah, as I say, it's a work in progress. At the moment, you can book pitches by by right. just phoning the golf club and booking oh, okay. a pitch. Through the golf club. Okay. Yeah. We are within uh, a, month to, a month to six weeks, we'll have a, a new platform online. Okay booking system payment gateway yeah so making it very very simple for not just pitch hire but also the football academy we've got a football academy we start in january so that's going well it's starting to build up um you'll better book for the football academy you'll be able to book for the golf academy which is ongoing and any new facilities we open up you'll be able to go online see what's going on book pay and turn up with your nice. receipt so okay. That once that element's in place, we're kind of in a soft opening period at the moment, but you can book. We've got a few groups coming down to play football, as I said, the Spanish Business Council. Um, so between now and the summer, you can book the cage pitch, we can book the football pitch at 11 o'clock at night. But from October is really when you'll have um, sort of soft opening for membership and be able to come down. And, and the nice thing with the membership is that, I mean, the process of developing the, how we structure at the moment, but if you're a member of that facility you will then get all the discounts at the golf club oh, okay so you'll have discounts at the golf club in the bar in the bar and restaurant in um on the driving range if you want golf lessons so it will be it will appeal to the whole venue and will there be a specific venue for you know functions as well down there like a clubhouse or yeah i mean most of our at the moment it's very much an outdoor space so yeah, we, no, we have a small yeah. um unit we've put down there that with um, with a case by case F and B element to it. So if you booked an event and you want F and B, we'll, we'll set it up. Um, but it's not open daily, but on a daily basis. Okay. We need to then look at how how do we do we put one of these inflatable domes down there where you have a pitch enclosed one of the four. I don't know if you've seen those, but you can put a oh, dome yeah, over yeah, the entire yeah. pitch. Do we build a, a bigger temporary unit that becomes? clubhouse where you can still do some indoor sport so to be honest that'll probably all come down to the revenue that mm. the current setup generates so basically um, the revenue we're not is in a just going to be coming in yeah we don't want to, we're not in a position where we want to be going right okay let's throw loads of money at this and and, and build it because you're under pressure straight away in this yeah. market at yeah. the moment yeah. but we're pretty confident we're confident that this will work it's the right time to do it and then the football element of it is obviously probably 50% of it because of the World Cup and the mm -hmm. way things are going mm -hmm. but for me uh, 
as a parent myself to be able to take my kids to one venue and be able to do golf, cricket, football, tennis, uh, maybe not tennis, swimming, mountain Beach biking. Volleyball. Beach volleyball we're putting in as well. Really? Yep, I'm going to put a few courts in. And to be able to leave them and go and sit and have some lunch and, yeah. and just see, look at the golf course, the greenery and, and the area, then I think we're on to a winner there. So I think that's, that's definitely what I would like to do as a parent and not have to go on a Friday and Saturday I can come to there and the kids can do everything yeah. in one venue so we'll, I think we'll be the first venue to really offer that um, to, a, to a wide scale extent of which sports you can partake in in a nice environment and the parents well, can still enjoy I've themselves. always been attracted uh, to the golf club because it is just beautifully green that's the you thing know? you yeah. get green you get green you can sit outside have your lunch in green atmosphere well that's what I was saying to my son when he came over here I said now you can understand why when I went back to the UK we would go for long walks in the forest and you know by the by the sea <coughs> just because just to get that colour mm -hmm. because everything does become a bit beige beige no, and absolutely. the golf club golf club's golf always club was a break I mean the golf club itself going back to the golf rather than the, the sports zone area the golf club itself we've we've extended our decking from the back of the clubhouse so we've got nice areas where people can sit and have lunch and look over the golf course again it's, it's that draw mm. um, we have the Saturday brunch now out on the grass so that you've got a kids zone area where we've got inflatables up and so they have opened up like the golf course was quite strict when I first arrived in yeah. 2006 like dress code I remember walking with shorts and a, a polo shirt and I wasn't allowed in I don't know if it was my shorts or my polo shirt um, but probably, probably shorts yeah. yeah maybe but now it is more yeah and I Something we're working More hard. European. Yeah, something we're working hard on now is it, for a long time now it's been open to the public, so it is open to the public. Ah. Every element of the golf club is open to the public. You can come and hit some golf balls on the range, borrow a club and, and have a practice. Everybody can pay for it and have a, and have a lesson. Everybody can use the bar in the restaurant. You can play the championship That's course. Good. It's open to the public, and I think what's happened is that, or definitely before when we were that busy, when we had a full membership of six hundred odd members. You didn't need to market the golf course. It was if you were a golfer and you came to Qatar, you kind of went to the golf club. Um, and the people in the restaurant and the bar were were golfers. Now you don't. You, a lot, probably it's probably fifty fifty. The people in the restaurant, and the bar, are people that from the public who are coming to use it as a venue because it's a nice venue to mm. have lunch. Yeah. Um, now the rebranding. I said that we're talking about creating this new brand with a sports zone. We're really putting together an overall marketing strategy for the golf club because we know that a lot of people still don't realise that they can come to the golf club. No. So we know we need to now market ourselves rather than before we didn't. You it's didn't kind of to. an element that they didn't really need to. Yeah. But I think it's long long past that point of where they didn't need to. I think they've let it... We've, it's kind of probably two or three years where we should have been marketing the golf club maybe and bringing people in or at least letting people know that this is what we've got yeah now we've got so much more to offer with these other sports and the sports zone and the saturday brunch outside on the grass and and the decking area where you can have events and also it's probably the only venue venue in Qatar where you can have we could do an event for five thousand ten thousand people because we've got the outdoor space to be able to do it so this is an element that even over the hotels we've had event companies interested because they want to do concerts. We could do, um, in the sports zone venue, we could have these, um, which is something I'm looking at as well, is a Saturday market once a month where you've got in the field and you've got... Oh, nice. You know, when you, you can go to these big sort of, not necessarily a car boot sale, but it's... I was going to say, can we do a car boot yeah. sale? Yeah, well, no, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a similar... But we, we've, we're toying with putting in, even down there, a, a, a semi-permanent stage with sort of... Uh, with ve uh, small huts around it, mm. vendor huts, if you like, where it's it's already a built-in stage. So if somebody wants to do a concert, you can kind of come and hire the whole area, and you can have vendors doing different yeah. food stalls, and you've got your stage at the end, and your band, whoever you're bringing in, can just set up, and because it's the perfect venue for a festival yeah. sort of setup. Yeah. So th there's the event side of it as well, which I think will will come back, I think, in the next couple of years, because that's. That, that side of it's gone a little bit with uh, yeah it's gone a bit dry it's gone a bit dry but yeah. I think that you've kind of got to be creative now as to what you put in um, and make it good value yeah I think if you bring in the right acts people will go oh yeah. absolutely they need yeah. some, some little bit of fun let's say so we've got that flexibility really to do 
and, and I think the hope well we're hoping as well that that will appeal on a on a 2022 sort of path as well because they will need to test fan zones and uh, areas where people will be drinking alcohol they'll be able to test the security and the golf club's a perfect venue for mm. that because we can host a 5,000 people fan zone on the ninth fair with the academy course and have big tents have the the alcohol see how it works see how the security works um, so we're not going to rely on that but I, w- I would say that that's we're in a good position where it's a great venue for, for anything for any scale of and are you doing anything for the World Cup this year? We're talking about sort of decking at the back of the golf club um, we're talking to a company at the moment about putting a temporary cover over that so we can put ACs in obviously the Russia World Cup's middle of July 50 degrees Yeah. so we'll need AC an AC area if we don't do that we would need to put in a, a full marquee probably down in the sports zone area which would be a second option so I think we'll do something Yeah. we haven't decided exactly yet um, Gary the GM's actually away at the moment so when he's back we should get I'm getting a quote in to, to put this tent over the decking area mm-hmm so we'll see whether it's uh, if it's feasible to do it and, and we think it's worthwhile, then we'll we'll definitely do something because there are still people here in the summer. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So, have you got any more questions for David? I think he's covered it all. He, I got he it has all covered it down. I'm going to put it all in. He's done a great the description. You might need to I think narrow it down, it's, edit it a bit. I do tend to go on. It's such a great initiative. Like no, the sports zone fun. sounds sounds spectacular. Uh, give us the dates again. I didn't put the dates down. I think you said it's going to be it's soft open now. Uh, you can pitch. Uh, you can book the. Um, you, the can book, you can book. So the fields, the right now you can book an eleven aside. We've got an eleven aside pitch. You can book. Um, so from this week we'll have that flooded as well. So that can be booked from seven a.m. to eleven p.m. Okay. Any day of the week, and the cage pitch, which has got its own internal floodlights, that's exactly the same. We do, because of the barriers on it, although we're not very busy yet, we do, um, you can book it as a seven aside from Monday till Thursday, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we've got it set up as five aside at the moment. But depending on a special request, we could just, it's only a case of us taking the barriers out. From a logistical perspective, it's easier to leave them in Friday, Saturday, if you like, take them out. Um, Sunday, Monday. So, And the mountain biking course is open and ready to go and is open to the public? No, it's used. We, we have a partnership with um, a company from the Pearl, Blue Pearl. Um, they come in and use it at the moment for um, school-specific camps. So they've been running a lot of those, um, I guess, helped by the blockade a bit, where they've been running camps for uh, for a few of the schools over the last year. They manage that and, and because from a safety perspective, and they have the bikes. At the moment, we haven't opened it. Although we own it, it's our bike track. Yeah. They're managing it at the moment. Okay. I, I would say that um, later this year, October, or definitely from January next year, once we've got our booking system in place and we've got a membership element and how, how sort of decide exactly how we're moving forward with the area, um, because I say things are developing every day, we're mm. deciding to put in beach volleyball courts and they'll be in over the summer. So we're still really deciding exactly how we go with it. Once that's all firm and we can run things professionally, and, and we will open the bike track, maybe just Friday, Saturday, maybe all week. Um, we're, we're not quite sure, but it will be open later this year or, or early next year for the public to use. Great. So stay tuned for updates on that. No, absolutely. So at the moment, yeah, call the golf club and book your pitch. Well, yep. you have to come in and give us an update. Yeah, absolutely. Later on yeah, I'd love to. In the year. Yeah, That'd definitely. Fantastic. Enlightening. It is. It's superb. No, I just remember when I was first here in 2006, I was running a, like a football league uh, within um, a company, and it was really hard to find venues. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Actually, before we finish, I'd like to say well done to the Pearl FC. We had a five-a-side football tournament on Friday night. It's kind of, a, a, again, a soft opening of this cage pitch. So yeah. we had six teams playing a little, little round robin, and then they played a semi-final and a final. Um, so that was great. We've got some great feedback from that already. There's a few of the similar sort of pitches around, but without the ability to have the food and beverage side of it oh, that we yeah. have. No, exactly. So that, that was that was difference. great. We had um, I popped down there. Some really people having a great time. We had a nice sponsorship from um, Brian Ferguson from Bloomsbury. Give him a punt. He needs help. Brian. That's all the way to so, Brian. Yeah. Say hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. Well done, Brian. We had a uh, Brian. Um, 
He's uh, he's moved again to Bloomsbury. He's trying to promote he's, his company. He's and like John moves here, there, and everywhere. So Brian put an iPad up for player of the tournament. So that was great. That went down very well. And then we had, um, yeah. So I think it was it was a well received event, and we will grow from there. So well done to the Pearl FC. They're actually the team that are linked with our academy. Oh, okay. So our football academy, which is running, we have a, a coach on on site who's running that permanently. The difference with our football academy is that. The Pearl FC are already in the third division and the academy is linked to that football team. So there's the only football academy really in Qatar where you've got the pathway all the way through to a team. Oh, wow. Okay. So nice. from age 3 to 18, as it develops, there's actually a pathway to go. Yeah. If, you, if you are staying in Qatar for sort of till you're 16, 17, you can actually play in a proper team. Wow. Okay. So, uh, but they, their five-a-side team won the, won the tournament as well. So, well Fantastic. Done. Yeah. so in case you didn't know the golf club Doha Golf Club is open to the public you can get out there for food and drink and enjoy the green atmosphere and then soon we're going to be looking forward to a proper sports, sports zone venue. sports zone branded will be in October you'll have sports zone at Doha Golf Club you'll see it everywhere so stay tuned nice perfect everyone thanks for tuning in yeah thanks for listening and watching and uh, we'll see you next week thank you David thank you thank for having you, me on the show yeah thank you Let's go. Oh.